In a world characterized by lightning fast information, we've seemed to have made a subconscious trade off. You see, there's a new power struggle unfolding in front of us the attention war. New technology has been blamed for a decline in our ability to concentrate, in which 49% of people feel like their attention span is shorter than it used to be. It's no wonder that 60% of adults wish their lives were simpler given the bombardment of new technology every year. But all hope is not lost. Enter Cal Newport. Now Cal Newport is a computer science professor at Georgetown University. Over the last decade, Cal Newport has perfected a relatively unknown concept known as deep work. So in this video, we're going to dive into what is deep work and how can it boost your ability to focus and concentrate. According to Cal Newport, there are two types of work that we first must define, shallow work and deep work. Shallow work doesn't require much concentration or skill and generally produces little value. For most knowledge workers, this includes constant communication through emails, messaging apps and meetings. Generally, a smart college graduate can be trained to do shallow work very quickly. Deep work requires sustained focus without distraction, which allows us to develop new skills and produce high value work that is hard to copy. Generally, deep work requires skills and expertise that must be developed over a long period of time. Now, deep work can be categorized by three pillars. Number one, valuable as deep work allows us to develop complex skills and we can then use this skill set to produce high value work. In the past, you could be successful doing large volumes of shallow work. However, in the modern world, these jobs are disappearing thanks to automation and outsourcing. Number two, rare working with sustained concentration in the modern world is becoming increasingly less common due to new technology advances and constant digital communication. Number three, meaningful, as when you do deep work, you become engaged. The work you're doing is actively challenging. As a result, you achieve a state known as flow. Flow is a mindset given to people who gain fulfillment from the work that they are doing. Now, why do so many of us find it so hard to concentrate? Well, in reality, it comes down just to two simple concepts. Most of us believe that willpower is a character trait, when in reality, it's a muscle. Each morning, we wake up with a limited amount of willpower, which gets depleted over the day as we exert effort, make decisions and resist temptations. The best way to avoid quick depletion of willpower is to set up daily rituals or habits, which makes our deep work almost automatic. Number two, attention residual. Switching focus between many tasks over several times in the day just depletes your performance. It's almost like some of your attention remains stuck on what you were doing before despite moving on to a new task. This is a problem both workers and students face when they're constantly being distracted by messages, emails, and friends or coworkers just popping by. The solution is to allocate large blocks of time to one project each without any distractions. We often imagine geniuses just working around in a chaotic behavior and being struck by inspiration at random times. In reality, most of the accomplished people in history had daily rituals or habits which helped them structure their life and increase focus. In order to truly enter a state of deep work, we have to understand the working styles that suits us and our personality traits the best. Cal Newport identified four different types of working styles. The first working style is monastic. You basically become unreachable like a religious monk. This way of working is best for those who work alone on long-term projects like writers and academics, allowing them to truly dedicate their lives to their craft. The second working style is bimodal. You switch between being unreachable and being connected for long stretches of time. This is great for those who need to focus deeply but have other work obligations too. The third working style is rhythmic. You set aside blocks of time to work deeply within your normal schedule. This is good for people with a busy full life who are still trying to get deep work done. The fourth and final working style is journalistic. You do bursts of deep work whenever you have time to spare. This can be the right option for those who have a busy and a regular work schedule. Based on these four working styles, try and understand which one suits your lifestyle the best. We must remain concentrated on the task at hand and avoid all unnecessary disruptions. So how do we do that? Well, number one, you need to schedule your deep work. Plan out your blocks of deep work. This should include what are you working on, what's your start time, what's your end time and where are your breaks. Do not switch to any other task, not even for a minute. Number two, you need to check your messages less often. Most of us assume we have to respond to emails or messages straight away. In reality, that's not true. Majority of your emails or messages are not emergencies. They do not need to be responded to straight away. 
So instead, carve out dedicated blocks where you respond to these messages. This could be once a day, twice a day, three times a day, but speed up efficiency by batch replying at certain points in the day. Number three, and a controversial one, avoid open spaces. Open spaces have become increasingly popular in the modern world. And don't get me wrong, open spaces can improve informal interactions and collaborations. However, this comes with a serious trade-off your productivity, visual distractions, noise level and privacy concerns can all lead to the loss of three to five hours of productive time per day. A study was performed by Stanford professor Clifford Nass over those who multitask often. He discovered that their brains were so chemically altered that they were unable to concentrate as effectively. So this comes back to the concept, what if focus isn't a character trait? but actually a muscle we can train. Well, luckily for us, Cal Newport shares three ways we can boost our willpower and concentration. Number one is pre-scheduled internet browsing time. Instead of just jumping on the internet as an easy escape route whenever you're bored, pre-plan your internet time and resist from going on the internet before that scheduled time. This will increase your mental willpower the same way training in the gym increases your physical strength. Number two, you need to reconsider your use of social media. Most people unconsciously try to validate social media as a positive tool, but the truth is social media is one of the worst tools you could have at your disposal. We need to weigh up the benefits and costs of all the tools around us, including social media, and understand what is the opportunity of cost of putting our time and effort into social media when there's other options out there which we could be focusing on? And a lot of the times, if we put the same effort we put into social media into other activities, it would better our careers, better our bodies, and just generally better our happiness. And finally, number three, it's okay to end your work at a set time. Cal Newport never works a weekend and never works past 6 p.m on a weekday, which goes against everything we're taught by both employers and social media gurus that we should just be working all the time. We should just be hustling 24 seven. He believes that a clear shutdown time actually boosts your productivity because it allows your subconscious mind to keep working on the problems in the background while you're not working. Also, research has shown that we can only really do one to four hours of deep work a day. After that, it's likely you're just doing shallow work. Although the action items we've discussed today may not sound groundbreaking, by implementing these habits, you'll notice a significant improvement in your ability to focus and concentrate. As someone that's gone through the schooling system, gone to a university, become a chartered accountant, and worked at the largest companies in the UK, Concentration is paramount to my day-to-day -day life. These are all small rituals that I implement in my own day-to-day -day life to boost concentration and combat the complex level of work that comes my way. By sharing these items, I hope to help boost your own concentration and focus, even if it's by 1% per day.